Jonathan Carmichael cautiously ascended the steps. Each step creaked a discordant tune like a chorus of tone-deaf crickets. He reached the front door, painted a vibrant shade of lime green. An unsettling feeling crept up his spine. What other oddities awaited him inside his brother's home? He hesitantly raised his hand and knocked. The door swung open, revealing a sight that made Jonathan's jaw drop. The interior of the house was an explosion of colour. It was like a rainbow had thrown up on every surface. Jonathan had always known his brother, Mabungi Creemeyer, was eccentric. But this was a whole new level of eccentricity. Mabungi, are you home? His voice echoed strangely in the oddly shaped hallway. He stepped inside, his shoes sinking into a shag carpet that felt suspiciously like real fur. The air was thick with the scent of lavender and something else. Jonathan couldn't quite place it. It smelled vaguely of burnt toast and old socks. He cautiously navigated his way through the house, each room more bizarre than the last. Jonathan wondered if his brother had hired a colorblind interior decorator or if this was some sort of cruel joke. The living room was a sight to behold. Jonathan stared at the walls, a kaleidoscope of colors assaulting his senses. He tried to focus on one thing, but his eyes darted around the room, overwhelmed by the sheer visual chaos. A giant orange sofa sat in the middle of the room, flanked by two armchairs upholstered in what looked like cowhide. A disco ball hung precariously from the ceiling, casting fractured beams of light across the room. It was still spinning, despite the lack of music. Jonathan wondered if it ever stopped. Did Mabungi ever turn off the disco ball? Or was this just a permanent fixture in this psychedelic nightmare? Good heavens, Mabungi. What possessed you to do this to a perfectly good house? Jonathan shook his head, trying to clear the image of the disco ball from his mind. It was no use. The image was burned into his retinas. He closed his eyes for a moment, wishing for the sweet relief of darkness. When he opened them again, the room was still there, just as garish and overwhelming as before. He sighed, accepting his fate. He was trapped in a world of color and chaos, and he had a feeling it was only going to get weirder from here. Good heavens, Mabungi. What possessed you to do this to a perfectly good house? He couldn't fathom his brother's taste. It was as if Mabungi had chosen the most jarring colors imaginable and decided to unleash them upon his home. Jonathan, a man of simple tastes and neutral tones, felt a headache forming behind his eyes. He longed for the calming beige of his own living room. He even missed the floral patterns on his wife's favorite armchair. At least those patterns had some semblance of order. He cautiously lowered himself onto the edge of the orange sofa, half expecting it to spring to life and swallow him whole. The cushions were surprisingly comfortable, sinking in all the wrong places. He felt a strange sense of unease wash over him. It was like being trapped in a child's drawing, where nothing made sense and logic had no place. Jonathan wondered if this was some elaborate prank orchestrated by his brother. Had Mabungi somehow anticipated his visit and decided to give him a sensory overload? He wouldn't put it past him. Mabungi had a mischievous streak a mile wide. Jonathan, my dear brother, you've arrived. A booming voice echoed from the hallway. Jonathan cringed. He knew that voice. It belonged to none other than Mabungi Creemeyer, his eccentric older brother. Mabungi strode into the living room, a wide grin plastered across his face. He was a sight to behold. His hair, usually a dull brown, was now a vibrant shade of pink. He wore a mismatched outfit that defied description. It was as if he had raided a thrift store's clearance bin and put on whatever he found. In his hands, he held a plate piled high with what appeared to be cake, but this was no ordinary cake. It was a multicolored monstrosity covered in enough frosting to make a dentist weep. I made you a cake, brother. Mabungi announced proudly, holding out the plate. 